Bleacher Report nominates Adolfo Mensa's trade with Detroit as one of the best moves of the draft. Let's talk about who they got with the 66 overall pick. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, David Shelsky. You can follow me on Twitter at SkullWorld and at MN Sports Podcast. Now do a Skull Brother a favor. Go down, click like, click subscribe. This will help this Skull Brother stay on the interwebs, pushing more Minnesota sports talk. We need more of it, not less of it. Click like and subscribe. Now, if you remember... The first night of the draft, you were probably as pissed as I was when we traded down from 12 to 32 and took a safety that you probably never even looked at. So you didn't know who he was, just like I didn't. I didn't I didn't look at safeties except for Kyle Hamilton. And if you watched my previous videos, pre-draft, not many of you did. I'm pretty new. But I was uh, looking at I did a video on Jameis Williams, among other receivers, but I, that was my favorite, uh, where we could possibly, if we stayed, pick at that, you know, that 12 spot. And then I also did a video on Jordan Davis, who I really thought we had a good chance of taking. And then I also talked about Kyle Hamilton. So that was the only safety I looked at. I didn't think we would draft a safety unless it was later, unless it was Kyle Hamilton. So wouldn't you know it, after we traded out, those three players were taken. The uh, Detroit Lions took Jamison Williams. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles took Jordan Davis, defensive tackle out of Georgia. Baltimore Ravens took Kyle Hamilton, safety out of Notre Dame. Now, the funny thing is, I was always making fun of the Detroit Lions making the trade with Matthew Stafford, getting the first pick of, of the draft of the Rams draft. And sure enough, Rams win the Super Bowl in true Lions fashion. They pick 32 with that pick, kind of lowering the value quite a bit. And then the Vikings help them out, get a receiver they wanted, Jamison Williams, who still has a knee injury, still recovering. So hold your horses on how we got screwed in this trade. And as an opening goes, there are some people that did like the trade. And the new school of thought was, is that we did okay with it. And now the old school of thought is we got a little bit hosed. And honestly, on the first night, I was like, would we get their next year's number one? Because I moved up so high. No, we moved up from uh, 30 or 46 to 34 in the second round. Uh, and we got the 66th overall pick. And that's the pick we're going to be talking about today. Now. The, that's Brian Asamoah, linebacker from Oklahoma. Now, the one thing I like about him is that he's he left as a junior. He didn't play in the bowl game. You usually don't if you're gonna be unless you're gonna be making the playoffs or he has something to prove. In his case, he felt like he didn't have anything to prove. So um, now he so he he was a junior coming out. Now I've had I've seen his height as six one. It says six foot on, his, on many of his player profiles. I've seen him as high as 228. The profile I'm reading from has him at 226. His arms are 32 and 5'8. Not great, but uh, probably pretty average. His hands are big, or 10, 10 inches. So that's good news on if you're grabbing a jersey as a running back's going through the hole. You know, having big hands for a linebacker is a good trait. His 40 time. Pretty good. 4.56 for a, a linebacker that's pretty good. Vertical jump, uh, 36.5, also not bad. And broad jump, 124, also pretty good. So athletic-wise, he's pretty solid. Now, the the right, I'm going to read the write-up on Brian Asamoah from NFL.com. Asamoah. 
Asamoa, pronounced Asumoa, family came to the United States from Ghana in 2000 and eventually settled in Columbus, Ohio. I like to point out something here. Kwesi, when he called um, Brian on the phone, he said to him, did you ever think you're going to be called, you know, NFL draft by a guy named Kwesi? Basically talking about their, uh, you know, their former, you know, where they were born, the name, you know, the sentimental value of like integration into the NFL and reaching out to uh, even Caribbean countries. Now, uh, instead of signing with the Buckeyes after a strong two-way career at St. Francis de Sales High School, he chose the Sooners. As a redshirt freshman, Asamoah played in all 14 games as a reserve, 23 tackles, 3.5 for a loss with two sacks. Not bad. 3.5 tackles for a loss on 23 tackles, and he, is a, and he was um, a reserve. He then started nine of 11 appearances in 2020, garnering honorable mention all Big 12 notice by leading the team with 66 tackles, five and a half for a loss with two sacks, one interception, four pass breakups. He's really breaking out with the with that ability. You can see, I'll talk a little bit more about it later. Asamoa was second team all conference selection in his final year at Norman leading his squad with 90 tackles, four for loss, enforcing two fumbles in 12 games, 10 starts. He opted out of the team's bowl game to prepare for the NFL. That was by Chad Reuters, NFL.com. Now, so I had some questions about this, this pickup. Undersized linebacker. We had a very poor rush defense uh, la- or last year and the year before for that matter, we got eight up on the ground. Do I want, did we want another undersized, well, we don't have really many undersized linebackers, but did we want to solve our problem by getting an undersized linebacker? Well, he did lead the team in 80 tackles last year, 56 of them solo. I can tell you he was a first to the ball and he was able to get them down. He was able to get them down. Now, his strengths uh, does the heavy lifting, as most of his tackles were solo efforts. You can see that in his videos. Quick read and react to early stages of, of the play. Reads his keys and recognizes misdirection in the run game. This is where he stands out quite a bit. I've seen misdirection where his entire team is going one way, and he's going the opposite. And he went the right way and makes the play. This is a great quality, great quality he has. And I think that's I think that's a common theme that all the players, especially you know, defense and the offensive guard we took, had great recognition of the play. They have great recognition of what's happening if it's our offensive guard that we took, his uh, ability to see someone filling a hole, coming on a blitz, he was able to do that. We got Lewis Seen, uh, Booth Jr., and Brian Osamoa. They got great read and react skills. Re- just there's a common theme there. Un- unfortunately, Brian's a little undersized. He has a full throttled, throttled trigger to disrupt blocking schemes. I see him. And he's not he's not super big, but I think he uses that to his advantage where he sneaks in behind somebody and the blocker coming around the edge doesn't see him. He ducks in and gets the tackle. I see that a lot in his uh, play. He he uses he just uses his physical abilities to his um to his uh, advantage. Very good sideline to sideline chase speed. That is also amazing on his part. He He's, again, sideline to sideline. I agree with that completely. Projectable traits and flashes as a playmaker. But, again, he get, he's the first one there, and he's caused he's caused fumbles and interceptions. He, he's a playmaker. You can tell. And, the, if anything, if he doesn't play a lot, this is a special teams ace. You can see it. 
in the way he plays. At least in the third round, we got a guy that's going to fill in at linebacker, play a lot, and also for the future even, and he's going to play special teams and he'd be successful at it. Uh, movement is athletic and easy to, easy in coverage, so they, they really rave on his pass defense, and you can see that. Able to expand coverage areas from zone. Uh, should shine as a kick and punt cover talent on special teams. Completely agree with all that. Now, they always got a nitpick. Built like a puffed up box safety. Don't doubt it. If you looked at him, you'd think he was a safety size-wise. Again, he, I think he's six foot. I don't think he's six one. But, you know, he, lo he actually looks like a running back. He's, he's pretty athletic looking, pretty built um, for a smaller linebacker. Um, you'll see some you now you'll see some uh, weaknesses that I do agree with here inefficient movement and false steps are part of the package pre-snap he's jumping around I don't know if it's to show people you know something else you see you've seen players sneak up and back this guy's hopping around I I, I don't know why um it's again it's inefficient are are you sneaking up to are you sneaking are you going to the right going to the left to like misdirect somebody, it it just it doesn't look. Um, you just don't see that very often. Uh, lack strength to prevent uh, being washed out on run on run plays. Very possibility. I haven't seen a lot of that. I've only seen his highlights, so you don't get to see the bad as much. Of course, I don't see too many breakdowns because of how deep he was picked in the draft. Nobody's really focused on awesome. Oh yet, I haven't seen anything on Vikings.com. Um, and so I would say that as a distinct possibility, considering his size, uh, takes inconsistent angles on tackles. Didn't see that again. Again, they don't see a lot of bad when you're looking at highlights. High entry point on contact leads to broken tackles. I don't know about the broken tackles, but on the highlights, he, he, he tackles high. His head's up, which if they could... If they could coach that out of him to where he's he tackles lower and still keeping that head up, I think they that's coachable. That's definitely coachable. Uh, occasional coverage busts can be frustrating. I don't know. Again, you, you don't see a whole lot of bad plays when you're looking at highlights, right? So that's Brian Asamoa. I like him. Uh, he's going to play. He's going to get a lot of playing time this year. I think you could see him in a dime defense, nickel defense, playing the inside linebacker, you know, playing it, you know, dropping back, pass coverage. He's a playmate. You can see him playing weak side linebacker. He shows the ability to blitz. I like him a lot. He's got good timing when he's blitzing. I like him a lot. He's a good player. I just wish he was 10 pounds heavier than the same athlete. I wish he was, but he's not. So we'll see how he is. It was a good pick by Brian Osimo. You could see Quasey really likes these guys. And that's a talk for another day. I think Quasey is a little too much of a player's GM. I think he might have a little bit of trouble trying in the future of cutting a player that he drafted. That's a little scary. I don't want that to happen. I think uh I think these first four guys he drafted, he was really in, invested in. And I hope he can make the right decisions in the future. But I think he'll I think he'll grow into the job and understand cutting a player is hard. And if you have to do it, you gotta do it. It's a business. And he's coming from a business background, so I think he'll make that transition. But he he is super friendly with these players. <laughs> All right, that's that's it for today. I'm your host, David Shelsky. This is Minnesota Sports Talk. You can follow me on Twitter at SkullWorld and at MN Sports Podcast. And if you stay this long, stop, go down and hit like, hit subscribe. Let's make it happen. Let's get more Minnesota Sports Talk on the interwebs. That's it for today. I'll talk to you next time.